those of you who got an invite, welcome to Nerd Prom. <laughs> no matter where in the world you are, we're all Nerds International. With the hyphen. Alright, you tube, it's Mr. Mean coming at you from very sunny Beaumont, Texas. Uh, sorry for lack of a video the last couple of days. I've been under the weather, fighting a cold. My wife is sick. I think my kid has got the cold now. I'm not sure. Anyway, today's video du jour. Well, before we go into that, let's stop. I got my first YouTube hate comment. I'm official. I'm a YouTuber now. I got, I got derisiveness and spite, and it just makes Mr. Mean happy. Someone out there didn't like my video. I don't even remember their name. I deleted it. I didn't even bother with it. And for whatever reason, it never posted on the site. I got notification of it. That's as far as it went. So I don't know. I went and checked the person's YouTube feed and their G Plus account. Nobody. They had like six friends or followers. And they didn't post. They never posted any comment. And if you think doing this is easy, try it. Um, it's not as easy as it sounds. I give mad props to guys like uh, Angry Joe and uh, all the other YouTubers out there. Francis, um, you know, their guys are putting out content. They have production crews now. They have employees. I'm just doing this in my spare bedroom with a camera and a snowball microphone. And I don't give a shit. I'm doing it for fun. It makes me happy. If you don't like it, don't watch. There's no need to post angry comments or be shitty about it. Besides, I preview all my comments anyway, so it's not going to make it on the web anyway. So if you want your 15 seconds of fame, you're not going to get it from me, and I don't really care. But anyway, I just thought it was funny that this person tried to say negative, mean, nasty things. Not, you know, didn't even, nothing even remotely constructive criticism. It was just downright hateful. And that's okay, because like I said, it never even got posted. I don't know where it's at. I checked the video that he supposedly posted under, and it's not there. He or she, I don't know if it's a guy. Um, and like I said, they have never, as far as I can tell, have never created any content. So I really don't care. Um, it's, you know, as a good friend of mine used to say in our role-playing game, the barking of the dogs does not affect the clouds. You guys like it. I'm at 199 subscribers. I need one more subscriber to hit that 200 mark. Um, thanks to you guys for clicking the like and the bell to ding the dong or ring a ling a ding dong, whatever. Um, I appreciate you guys watching. I do appreciate the constructive criticism and the good comments. I thank you guys very much because I know you're taking time out of your busy life to watch me ramble on about shit that really doesn't matter. And I appreciate that. And I appreciate all the helpful and positive comments about my son and my family. And again, a big heartfelt thank you from Mr. Mean to you guys. So let's get on with the video du jour. Today is an oldie but a goodie. And again, I reached in the box of goodness and I pulled something out. Slay Industries. This is a British game by Nightfall Games. Uh, Dave Alsop uh, is the, the big creative guru, the big head behind it. Um, let's look at our show notes because we're all fancy and shit. Uh, this one, the copy I have, I don't believe it's the original the original was, I think, produced by Nightfall Games and published by Nightfall Games. Um, but this one, the copy I have, was 1993 and was published by Hogshead Publishing. And that name may sound familiar to guys, to some of you, because they published a lot of the uh, Warhammer, I would call it 2.5. Um, they had just reprinted um, the core Warhammer book and then got the rights to make supplements. They made a really good Dwarven supplement and they made a, a, a real nice Elven supplement. But there, and then they made Mindheim, uh, sold down the river or something like that, which was a supplement. If you don't have those books, go out and get them. They're fantastic. And I'll possibly try to do a review on those later on. Um, I've already done a Warhammer review and uh, another. A uh, gracious person did their review and it was awesome because they actually corrected some mistakes that I had made in mind because well I'm old and kind of big and dumb so yeah but um, Nightfall Games Limited did this Dave Alsop and Jared Earl uh, and Tim Dedopolis I hope I Deadpolis I hope I said that right anyway those are the guys behind the game this is a fantastic game you want to talk about grim dark and dirty in a 
pseudo sci-fi setting this is your game um, this is basically take Logan's Run the old TV show Logan's Run um, take Blade Runner and your favorite kind of sort of cyberpunk setting and mash them all together um, oh and add in crazy serial killers and you've got Slay Industries um, Mr. Slay owns Slay Industries he pretty much owns everything um, and in this dystopian future TV is free that's right cables free you can get all the TV you want to consume for free um, and what you do is everybody watches TV like I said Slay Industries owns everything they own you too and as a player character you play a slop yes that is the official term a slop it's a derogatory term and I wouldn't say it to one of their faces but you play a slay operative or a slop this game and its time back in the early uh, uh, 90s um, and and beyond um, was a lot of fun it had a great 2d10 mechanic um, it was a basically a 2d10 plus your skill if you got an 11 or better plus or minus modifiers you succeeded if you got a, a 10 or less you failed it was that simple it wasn't a hard mechanic where this game in my opinion had its failings was in the combat system it was too convoluted once you wrap your head around it it's pretty easy but it was it it made for a lot of bookkeeping um, and part of that was intrinsic to the game because you could go around and kill people and camera crews would follow you and everything cool like that. You could get sponsorships. That's right, you could be a contract killer and you could have a sponsorship. Or if you work for Slay, your job is to go out and do missions or BPNs, blueprint news articles. Um, because remember, the media pushes everything in this dystopian future and they want you to watch TV. And what makes good TV? Combat. Um, little man against the big machine. All that fun stuff. And so... Slay operatives would get these BPNs from the Office of Contracts, and they would go out and they would do missions. Um, and that's where the GM runs the players through, and the players are the Slay operatives, and they do those BPNs. And as they do those BPNs, they get they can get endorsements, they can get uh, money, of course. They, uh, every BPN offers some form of cash. You could sometimes even get equipment, very rarely, but you could. Um, and you went out and you did these missions. And it's a very dystopian, very dark world. It always rains. Uh, it is set on the world of Mort, or the world of progress, as it's called. And uh, the guy on the cover there is a, contract, a famous contract killer called Halloween Jack. He's a major NPC in this game. I, don't, I can't remember if they give him stats. You can, you can still buy this game. You can buy it on Drive-Thru RPG. You can buy it from uh, Nightfall Games' website. I'll put a link on the, uh, on the notes. Um, but what made this game fun is it had a bullet tax. And man, you say, man, that's a lot of bookkeeping for an RPG, but what's the point of a bullet tax? Well, Mr. Slay, in his infinite wisdom, realized that close combat and up close and personal combat and murder, for lack of a better word, garnered better ratings than just people sitting there in a protracted firefight. So there's a bullet tax. So your players have to keep track of their bullets. And the more bullets they fire, the higher the bullet tax. So ammunition is crazy expensive in this game. Reason being, they want you to get up close and personal so they can film it. There's all these little drones flying around, and they record everything. And so that's the whole point of the game is to get your plays and in some stories and, and, and to go out there and figure out what the truth is. And the truth is a big thing in here. There's a lot of short fiction and stuff talking about the truth. Um, one of my favorite... Uh, quotes from this game is from Mr. Slayer himself and he says I will give you everything you want just give me blind obedience and I thought that was a cool quote and I used to use it in my games all the time um, my good friend Brian Isaacoff turned me on to this game years ago and uh, we played a couple times and I didn't for some other friends I ran a small campaign and we had a lot of fun there is rumor of a 2.0 coming out but not until maybe next year or the year after they are riding high off of a Kickstarter that they did for their um, uh, I can't even think of the name of it now um, they did a miniatures based game Cannibal Sector 1 <clears throat> 
and they did a miniatures game for that in conjunction with another company and they've produced some really cool miniatures that would of course work well for slay they have a facebook page just go out there and you know do a, a facebook search for slay industries and you'll find them um the creators are heavily involved on the facebook page they'll answer questions um, this is the hardback. I'm not sure if you can still buy it in hardback. I know you can get the PDFs. They have since produced some um, content uh, for uh, for the game, so it's still be actively being supported by Nightfall Games, and uh, it's it's a fun game. Again, if you can get past the Kluji combat system, um, in my opinion, I think it's Kluji. Some people may like it. Some people might like that that depth of uh, of detail. I I don't. I I prefer a more Freeform combat system like um, uh, Savage Worlds or even um, uh, Mutant Chronicles does it a little bit better. But um, this game had obviously a, a plethora of close combat weapons as well as ranged combat because obviously sometimes you just need to use a gun. Um, but um, as you can see, even on the cover, he has a chain axe, and that's obviously he gets really great ratings because he's crazy. Um, and uh, it's, it's just a fun game. It's very dark. It rains all the time on Mort. Uh, there's hardly any area where there's not rain. Um, and uh, I, I can't say enough about the world. Um, the interior art even shows raindrops. That's supposed to be raindrops falling. Um, the art is extremely consistent through here. Um, uh, there are a couple of different artists. Um, and there are a couple of different character classes, uh, not just humans. Um, you can play all kinds of stuff. Here's a, a sample of the character sheet. Um, it's pretty easily laid out and, and well done. And you can just make all kinds of, uh, of critters. You can make humans. Uh, I'm trying to think of the, uh, the list. Yeah, you can be a human. You can be a frother, which is still a human, but they're just doped up on drugs. Think of a Scottish... Uh, Klansman or an Irish Klansman with it wielding a big two handed claymore pumped up on drugs, and you've got a, a clansman or father. You have Ebens, which is think of your favorite uh, emo kid and give him crazy psychic powers. Um, a brain waster is even worse than the Eben. Um, Wraith Raiders are monsters, there's no other better way to put it. They're monsters with crazy psychic powers. Um, Shaktar are basically, for lack of a better word, a m mammal shark, a shark man, um, and they're just, but they're like samurai, which is kind of cool. So they have this code of honor. Uh, they're big, hulking brutes. They're strong, and uh, they're just badasses. Um, and then you have stormers. Stormers are cool because they're genetically manip manipulated DNA. And they're a monster. Lack of a better word. They're the things that go bump in the night. Uh, the monster in your closet, under your bed. It's these guys. Um, and they uh, they work for Mr. Slay. He, he invented them. And uh, you play one of those characters. It has a, a pretty decent character creation system. And uh, you go out and you do what you do uh, by doing these blueprint uh, news files. I'm going to see if I can find a... I don't remember if they have them in the book. Yeah, they, well, there's the character sheet. Um, and there's a couple source books out. Mort, The Contract Killers uh, Directory is another one. Uh, these are all readily available as PDFs. You may even still be able to get them as paperbacks. Here's a copy of a BPN right there. You can see these. Um, and those are blue, blues print uh, news files. And Third Eye is the huge um, company out there that uh, controls the media, basically. And, of course, Slay owns the media. And then you have Slay Industries Release, um, standard format for all departments. These are forms, and they actually give you permission to photocopy these. And the point is, is you kind of inundate the players with paperwork, but it's part of the role-playing experience. So if you're a GM that likes doing handouts and your players like props, this is one of those games that's really cool because you can make like a folder dossier of a contract killer, and then you can give it to the player, you know, and you have a bunch of information in there. Viga Death is uh, one of the contract killers. He's super spooky crazy. Drawn by Dave Alsop, who's the creator of this game. Uh, Department of Extermination, Extermination Warrant. So these are obviously forms and paperwork that you can get, and uh, your players can go out and do things. So it's a really cool game. Like I said, it's, um, it's very dark. It's not a happy, feel-good game. Um, 
there's a lot of poverty there's a lot of down and out people in the world and they're just trying to survive and their only escape from the harsh reality of life is TV and Mr. Slayer gives them all the TV they can handle for free um, every house every no matter if you're in the poorest part of the neighborhood or the richest house you have TV you have a flat screen TV or you know media consumption device so it's pretty cool um, combat like I said is a little bit convoluted um, in my um, taste but like I said if you wrap your head around it and your players all get it it'll run relatively smooth but there is a lot of bookkeeping in the game and I'm not a big fan of bookkeeping when I role play but you all your bullets have a penetration uh, value and then your armor has a protection value and of course you have to subtract those from each other and anything left over, left over plus or minus affects your damage um, player mortality in this game can be very high if you don't balance out the adventure um, cannibal pigs are like these chemically enhanced uh, mu genetic mutated pigs that are the size of basically a bull and uh, they will eat you they're cannibalistic and they, they eat their own kind and they get bigger as they do so obviously y you get some big pigs and uh, that's actually one of the early on BPMs that you get in here is to go down and clear out some cannibal cannibal pigs um, so there's a lot of cool stuff in here. there's a lot of flavor in this game if you like um, telling cool stories that are kind of dark and gritty this is a game for you. Um, if you've never played Slay, I whole, highly recommend it. If nothing else, there's an adaptation out there of Savage Slay that they've used the Savage Worlds rule set for. Um, it's freely available. You can find it. Just do a Google search for it. If you don't like these mechanics, but you need to pick this book up it's for the world setting and the flavor. Uh, the Savage Slay doesn't give you all the background information that's in this book. So definitely want to support the game um let's sell a couple copies and uh let's show those guys that there's slops out there in the fields waiting for some bpns this is a cool game this is definitely a buy in mr means uh uh i um uh the tagline down here um by the way is guns kill but so does the truth because what you're doing as it's a it's a contradiction in terms because the lower you start out at SCL 10, which is your security clearance level. And then as you go lower, Mr. Slay is SCL 0. He's the top dog. As you go lower, you learn more and more about the truth of the world of Mort and about the Slay Corporation. Unfortunately, the more you know about the truth, the darker it is and the ugly stuff starts floating to the surface. And so you start learning that this company that you work for may not necessarily be the super awesome company that you thought it was when you were SCL 9.9 .9. um, and it's kind of fun how that's part of the the lure of the game is getting deeper into the game and learning about the deep dark secrets of Mr. Slayer and uh, and Slay Industries so it's pretty cool in that aspect so this is definitely if you're one of those GMs that likes a lot of lore you like an in-depth background to your game this is a good game for you um, like I said the, the combat mechanics are not my style but they're workable um, if, if your group wraps your head around it then you'll have no problems if you're a GM make sure you hit those players you know with that bullet tax tell them tell them about it in the in the story background and you know make them understand that how everything is super expensive like uh, a soda out of a machine costs like 10 bucks for a, a can of soda is like 10 bucks so everything is super expensive you owe your life to the corporation uh your armor your weapons the corporation owns it all and they sell it all to you but then you work for them so it's a vicious circle um but of course then you go and you get um um sponsors and then the sponsors will pay your bill attack bullet tax or they'll pay for your armor repair or they'll pay for your vehicle um, but it's not all about necessarily the money because then there there is a police force they're mainly NPCs but you can play one and they get I, I, I don't think it's in this book I think it's in one of the other source books but you can play a shiver a shiver is basically the local police they're, they're a military organization but they're the local police force and 
they they are the guys that go in first, and when they get their asses handed to them, they call slay operatives or slops, and they don't particularly like you, but they understand that you are better than them, and they know that. And so it's kind of a dichotomy, you know, it's a love-hate relationship. They hate having to call you in, but they don't want to die. So it's, you know, it's one of those. So, um, again, I can't stress how dark and gritty this game is. Everyone's, oh, Shadowrun's so dark. Shadowrun ain't got nothing on this, baby. This is a dark game. Um, but there's that light at the end of the tunnel, and you're reaching for that light. And then you realize that that light may not be as bright as you thought it was as you get lower in the game and the truth starts becoming aware and then it can even go to the point where now the players know too much what happens now and it's fun then there's an opposing organization in here as well and you know the players may learn about them and so on and so forth so definitely pick it up it's a wealth of information in this book it is a hardback and like i said i believe it's still available let's see how many pages do we have for our reading enjoyment there's a lot of character sheets because there's the different classes of characters that you can play. And there, oh, there is a bunch of uh, pre-done BPNs in here. Um, as you can see there, those are all like um, adventure stories. Um, and they, they give you some basic information in here. But I think we're looking at 200, about 290 pages um, of just pure goodness. So if you find this on the shelf, find it at your used bookstore or even in your favorite game store, they have a copy sitting on a shelf. They did make a softback version of it, so it might be easier to find that way. Um, pick it up. You'll be glad you did. It's it's a good read. Uh, the writing in it is very well done. Um, Dave Alsop um, paints a very dreary, dark picture, um, and it's up to you to inject light in it as a GM if you want. Or you can just run a dark game if that's what you like. Um, it's a very cool game. Um, like I said, it, it's a buy. So that's Mr. Mean's thoughts on Slay Industry. Let me know what you think. Have you played it? Do you like it? Um, if you do pick it up, give it a read. Tell me what you thought. Um, I'd love to hear it. As always, click the little bell up there. It lets you it lets you know when I post new videos. I try to get a video out at least every every other week. Uh, sometimes I do two or three in a week. Sometimes I only do one every two weeks. Like I said, I'm coming off being sick, so I only did one video in the last two weeks. So anyway. Ding that dong to be dinged when I dong. And uh, hit that like and subscribe. Tell your friends I need one more subscriber to hit 200. That would be cool. Um, and then we'll go from there, man. Um, I want to keep doing these. They're fun. I know you guys like them when I get the subscribers. So let me know. Anyway, I hope everybody's having a great week. Um, happy Monday. Peace, love, and happiness. And remember, Mr. Mean says, be nice. <laughs>